Amen. Praise God. So we've been we've been learning about discipleship and evangelism. The biggest question is how can this be? How can this be applied in my life? How can I go out and influence someone with the light and the salt that I am? Praise God. And that is what we're going to do today. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So I want you to open a scripture from Luke chapter 1. Amen. The question that Mary asked, 34. Luke chapter 1, verse 34. How will, how will this be? How will this be? Since I do not know a man. Praise God. You got the scripture? So my, my question today is, how will discipleship and evangelism be when I don't know anyone? When I don't know how to go and do it? How can this be? So with great expectation and the message that the angel brought to Mary was so nice to hear, right? Praise God. What, what was the message that the angel gave to Mary is that Christ will be born in you. Hallelujah. You will give birth to the Savior. Amen. The message was excellent. Hallelujah. Pastor, your message was good. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what I told yesterday. Amen. If anyone leaves this place after three days and says that message was very good, that is the failure of this meeting. Praise God. But if anyone comes and says, look, Pastor, amen, I have been changed by the messages and I now live differently. Amen. I look at it all differently. Amen. I go and try to touch someone and praise in the Lord, you know, by sharing the love of God to someone. I think that will be the success of this three days work that you have all put in together. Praise God. Amen. So I personally am not happy when you say, the message was very good. But I'll be very happy next time when I come. The church is full with all new believers. Hallelujah. And you all are now disciples. We should remove that word believers. Huh? Praise God. Huh? Praise God. You agree with me? Are you a believer? Yes, I'm a believer. Ask next time the question. Are you a disciple? Praise God. We all need to become a disciple. And the disciple is the one who serves, who becomes a blessing, who carries the message of the cross. A disciple is someone who imitates Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The two things that you need to always keep in mind. Amen. Always love God first. Always fear God first. If these two things you keep in your heart, in your mind all the time, I will love God. Now, how do you love God? With all your mind. With all your heart, with all your strength. Praise God. And if you fear God, you will not fear anyone else. And that's where priorities are important. Who am I? Who's watching me? Amen. Whom do I love? Praise God. So if you know these two things, if you keep these two things, you'll not be afraid, shy. You know, you'll not be ashamed to share the gospel. No. I mean, you and I, we are disciples and we are accountable. Accountable to God. Praise God. In Dubai, there are cameras everywhere. Everywhere there are cameras. Right? Everyone knows someone is watching. In the lift, in the road, when you drive, everywhere there is cameras. Amen. And people, because of that camera, they are very careful about what they do. You litter, Immediately somebody comes and there's a fine because it's captured. You over speed in one kilometer, every one kilometer there's a camera. We heard yesterday somebody who flew in Middle East and had some fines, praise God. Or Europe, even praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are cameras everywhere. So what is that person now? Be very careful because he's been watched. That is what we, if we get, you know, I fear God. So what I do. When I am alone, amen, I think no one is watching me, God is watching me. When I have a spare time, what am I doing? God is watching me. Hallelujah. What do I do with my body, my life, my mind? Amen. The words that I speak, I am accountable. You are accountable. A disciple is accountable. 
Praise yes. God. And that is why discipleship, the teaching is very important. Jesus said, feed them. To whom did he say that? To his disciples. Amen. And they always had limitations to say, come back and tell them to Jesus. But Jesus said, go and do it. Do it. Praise God. So if you love God and if you fear God, you will not be worried about resources. Amen. If you want to save someone, you want to live for Jesus, you want to be an example to someone, live that life. And when many people will see you and come and ask you and inquire of you, that's how it happens there. And that's how we are able to win souls. Not because of preaching, not because of praying. I mean, all that happens secondary. But if there's someone who wants to come and open up, amen, it is your life. Praise God. So how can this be? Is the question that Mary gave the, to ask the angel. When the angel said, this is what God plans to do with each one of you. Amen. You will be, you'll give birth to the Savior and he will be the Messiah. Amen. Everyone will come to him. Every, the world will be saved through him. Amen. But God has chosen you, Mary. And immediately the question is, how can this be? Today the same question may be going in your heart. Pastor, it's good to listen, but how can this be? How can I go and do it? Amen. The answer is right there. Next slide. Read. 38. 35. Yeah. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, mm. and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. If yes, will, yes, that's enough. Thank you. We'll just uh, go, uh, you know, uh, reading each scripture over there. How will this happen? Who will come upon you? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Father gave us his only begotten Son. Amen. But if Jesus has to be born in you, it is only because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have to evangelize, if you have to be a true disciple, a faithful witness, amen, how will this be? It's only if the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Let me tell you the first word is holy. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, every evil spirit will leave you. Praise God. There will be no limitations now for you. Because Mary thought it can happen only after marriage. Praise God. But the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. Supernatural things will take place. When the Holy Spirit overshadows you, it is no more your flesh, but by the power of God that you will go out. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, amen, not but what the books of this world speaks, but what the power of God, the plan of God will be executed through you. Amen. When will this happen? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit comes in the service, every evil spirit will leave. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So when you are listening to this message, you are receiving the Holy Spirit with the words that's coming in your ears and believing that I will be changed only when the Holy Spirit overpowers me. Amen. We are not here to control the Holy Spirit, but we are here to give our control to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We want the Holy Spirit to control us and not the other way around. Praise God. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit comes at the service, amen, the worship will go to the next level. When the Holy Spirit comes to the service, the children will speak those scriptures which will prick you. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit is in the service, a person may come in the weakness of his body, but he will leave back the new strength, new energy, and new hope. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, hallelujah, amen, you will become a different person. Praise God. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that which you think is impossible will become possible. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 It's not by my strength. It's not by my power. But when he comes upon me, I will be able to do those things uh, which otherwise is impossible. Praise God. How can this be? 
How can the church grow? How can the leaders be anointed? How can the worshipers be more anointed? It's only when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Somebody start praising God for the Holy Spirit. Somebody start praising God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. When He comes, every weakness will go. When He comes, every infirmity will go. When He comes, every sickness will go. When He comes, there will be no limitations. You will start writing new songs in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All worshipers, all those who have a heart to sing for Jesus, wait in the presence of God. Use your guitar, play your organ, and God will give you a new word, new melody, new music, and with that, the church will go to the new level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This happens there. That's why I'm sharing this with you. We are coming with our own album now. Christ Worship Center. Hindi and Urdu songs. Already three songs have been recorded. Another seven are coming. Because everyone gets new songs in the presence of God. They have a heart to worship. They have a heart to sing. And they receive words from God. And when I listen to those songs, they tell me, Pastor, we've got a song. I've got a song. I said, play. Okay, let me listen. When I listen to the lyrics, I no, it is not from this man. It is only from God. Amen. Because I know the man. Hallelujah. I know how them. Hallelujah. But the words that they are singing is not from them. It's from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. How can this be? When he comes upon you. Amen. I want to excel in my work life. How can it be? When Holy Spirit comes upon you. Praise God. I want to do good in my secular job. How can it be? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Hallelujah. Stop taking scans. Stop taking reports. Stop taking all the medical things. When the Holy Spirit comes upon me. Hallelujah. I will be transformed. I will be revived. I will become a different person for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can this be? It will only be when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. So no human strategies works. Amen. No human thoughts work. Amen. It's only the work of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit does it for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. It's not for your name. It's not for the church name to be glorified. Church belongs to Jesus Christ. Praise God. And when you believe that, Holy Spirit will take over every service. Praise God. Amen. We often pray, Lord, take over the service in your hand. Take control over the service. Take control over the worship team. But I know, hallelujah, if the worship team takes five, ten minutes more, there is praise the Lord coming. That praise the Lord means you are over. <laughs> you are over time. Praise God. Some praise the Lord are not actually praise the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. Some hallelujahs are hallelujah. <laughs> ah, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That hallelujah didn't come yesterday and day before yesterday. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we should not, we should leave all in the hands of it's 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 anyway off day. And we have food, right? Praise God, George Paul, is me a thumbs up. So don't worry about food. Don't worry about what will I go after this service. You will not go anywhere. You will be here only. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Let's move forward. Amen. So, effects of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's learn that. Amen. Because how can this be? So one is the Holy Spirit will come upon you. What will happen next scripture? We'll go scripture verse wise. Yeah. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. Mm. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. For, yeah praise okay. God. For my version says she was barren. Correct. She was unable to conceive. So what happened when the Holy Spirit came upon Mary? The Holy Spirit gave a revelation. Okay. About her relative, Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth was six months pregnant but the news was only with Elizabeth and Zechariah they didn't share this news with anyone because of advance of age she had conceived a baby and they had hidden this news with anyone so her relative Mary even she doesn't know about this news praise God amen 
because they don't want anyone to know because it's like, you know, at this age, you've got a baby, you know, that baby, but what happens is when the Holy Spirit, I've got to learn something over here. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Holy Spirit will reveal some things to you, which otherwise people don't share with you. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit shared, amen, about Elizabeth who was barren, but now is having a baby and in the sixth month, absolute clarity of the word of knowledge. Praise God. Amen. So one thing that the Holy Spirit will do when he comes upon you, amen, you will get some news or some message from the Holy Spirit upon someone else, what he or she is going through. Amen. Amen. So now listen. Amen. When you have the Holy Spirit upon you, you will come to know what your brother, your sister is going through and the Lord will reveal that to you so that you can go and meet and pray for them. Many a time we don't share our problems with anyone, but we share all the good things that is going in our life. Amen. We know you don't even share it to the closest person whom we know because we think that, oh, why should we spoil the you know, happiness? Why should we spoil the atmosphere? Why should we share this? This is, you know, I know some people will say, oh, this is God's will. Praise God, you know. But she didn't share this, even though it was good news, right? Conceived after many years, hallelujah. And we see that the angel appearing to her husband Zacharias and saying, your prayer has been answered. So it was a good news for the family, but they didn't share that with anyone. But see the point number one, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Lord will reveal to you what others are going through so that you can become a blessing for them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Go for the next. Even Elizabeth, your relative is okay. For no word from God will ever fail. Praise God. Yeah. 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mm. Then the angel left her. Praise God. So submission, surrender. Okay. May your word be fulfilled in my life. So today, if from in the pulpit you get a word, okay, you will have a question, how can this be? This is the answer that you need to be sitting over here with. Let your word be fulfilled in our church. Amen. Amen. Pastor, what you are preaching, let it be fulfilled in my life. Amen. I take it personally because it will not be because of your words, but it will happen because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Impossible things will happen. Amen. Through your ministry, through your prayer, through your life, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. What did Mary say? No, let me get officially married and then I will receive your word. No, praise God. She said, I am your maid servant. Let it happen to me according, according to your word. How many of you will say that today? Let the Lord, let it happen to me according to your word. Let it happen to me according to your word. Let it happen to me according to your word. Amen. Your word, Lord, is peace for me. Your word is joy for me. Your word is freedom for me. Your word, I don't care what the world will think about me. But I know it is from you. And I humbly surrender myself before your word. Mary surrendered. You know what she received that time when she surrendered? Amen. She was putting her life at risk. Humiliation. Before marriage, how can you be conceived? Amen. The culture of those times and this times are the same. Praise God. Amen. But she bowed down before the word of God. Hallelujah. Many people hear the word of God. The Bible says, if you hear the word of God today, do not harden your heart. Pray to God, Lord, revive me. Pray to God, give me a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. A good heart to receive your word and to work according to your word. That has to be a cooperation with the Holy Spirit. We are not here to hear tickling messages. We are here not here to see, hear about only, you know, encouragement. All that is good. Hallelujah. But we want a move. We want a change. Praise God. You know, elephants, when they are small, they tie elephants with a chain on a small tree. But when the, when the elephant grows up big, still the same chain is used. Because when the elephant was small, the elephant tried to break that, but couldn't break up because it had little strength that time. 
But the elephant's brain is such that when he sees the chain and the tree, he will think that I am bound, I cannot move. But the elephant has forgotten that it's become very big now, it just has more power. So elephant thinks, oh, I'm chained, so I cannot do anything. But there's a day that comes when the elephant goes mad. <laughs> Have you seen an elephant going mad? You should see Kerala news and all that. You will see auto rickshaws flying in the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will see people are running helter skelter. And the man who was controlling is a thin man on the top. <laughs> and he's controlling with how you know his legs, his fingers, the first fingers of the legs. That's how he's controlling. That is how the elephant is controlled. The elephant thinks that I cannot do anything. But one day salvation comes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That time no one can stop. Praise God. That's what I'm telling you. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, no one can stop you. No one can limit you. Hallelujah. No one can draw a line for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You yourself have drawn some lines. Amen. Today, ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, Amen. Remove those lines. Remove those boundaries. Remove those chains. This deliverance must come within me today. Hallelujah. You have defined, oh, I cannot do, I cannot do, I can, I'm only this much, I am only this much. False humility is also another problem. Oh, I'll be here only. That is false humility. I will be here only. Praise God. No. Amen. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, Amen. it will bring a change. It will bring a change in your physical life. Hallelujah. You will conceive unto the word of God, the power of God, the prophetic word of God will come inside of you. And then you cannot go back to that cold storage again. Please understand this. You are all alive, but without the Holy Spirit, all of you are dead. But when the fire of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, hallelujah, amen, all chains that you are supporting your life will be burned, and all chaff will go away, hallelujah, you will start burning for Jesus Christ now, hallelujah, amen, people who watch soccer, have you observed them? They are so passionate, you know, big screen, and as if they are playing, you will see their legs going from here and there in the sofa. Amen. And the wife will come and remove all the other things which is aside because he will break all three, four glasses also. Amen. Everything. Why? Because he feels that he is inside of it. Actually, he is sitting somewhere. Pouch cut it. Put it. Put it. Pouch potato. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He feels that he is in the match, right? And he doesn't want anyone to disturb him. What is that spirit? Football spirit. Soccer spirit. Cricket? The screen is this, the ball goes this, and this guy looks like this. <laughs> so the screen. Why? He feels that he is there in the stadium. Amen. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will feel that you are in the ministry. You are evangelizing. You are a disciple. You have the five breads, two fishes. You don't know what to do with it. You will look for people who know you can reach out. The star that guided the wise men to Jesus. Amen. They came all the way from Middle East. To Bethlehem. Seeing what? One star. Praise God. Praise God. There are so many stars in the world. Football star. He will guide you to football. Hollywood star. He will guide you to movies. Praise God. Praise God. If the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be that star who will lead everyone to Jesus. The match will get over in one hour. After that, this guy is again depressed. Praise God. The movie gets over in two hours. After that, this guy is again depressed. But once you become that star to bring wise men to Jesus, those people will never be depressed. Hallelujah. Be that star. And they said, we saw his star in the east. Amen. They traveled to seven. You know how long they traveled? Amen. Eight to nine months they traveled because they were on Camelback. Not on Tesla back. <laughs> they didn't have what you have in your cars. Huh? GPS. 
They are only one thing, star. This is an extraordinary star. Am I talking prophetically about you? You are going to be an extraordinary star leading everyone to Jesus. Cry, ask. Ask the Lord to do that. Don't be those stars. There are many stars who have faded away. There are many stars who look like stars, but they have faded away. There's a club in India called the Lions Club. What does it mean, Lions Club? There's a psalm also about that, you know. Bala Simhangal. The young lions will suffer. Amen. Without food. Who are the young lions? The lion club members' children. The club is called Lions Club. But look at their children. They are the ones that are mentioned in the Bible. They will elegate the Hallelujah. Praise God. Lions Club. Ask where your child is. Child is in drug company, bar, don't know future, praise God, lost, lost. But the Bible says, he who does the will of God, he who does the will of God will stay forever. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. In us is the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. When you roar, praise God, every other lion will shut their mouth. Praise God. When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, among the lions, last week one of my brothers said, Pastor, when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, you know, I said, it's not, not just the den, it was lions also there with him. Right. Praise God. Praise God. They all said, we are lions. But they could see the lion of Judah in Daniel. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you will become a different person. Praise God. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you will become strong. Can I read one scripture? Amen. Judges chapter 14 verse 7. Can, can someone help me with that? Praise God. Then he went down and talked with the woman and he liked her. Yeah, go on. Sometime later, when he went back to marry her, he, returned, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. And in it were, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. What happened previously was when he was walking down to Timnath with, along with his parents. Amen. We see something happening over there. Can we read that just a couple of verses above? Samson went down to Timnah mm. together with his father and mother. Mm. As he approached the vineyard of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring towards him. Mm. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands mm. as he might have torn a young goat. Mm. But he told neither his father or his mother what he had done. Praise God. The Bible says the Spirit of God came upon Samson. When did it come? When he saw the lion running towards him. Praise God. Amen. And what happened? He ran towards the lion. Till then the lion might have thought, everyone runs away from me. But here is a man who is running towards the lion. Amen. Hallelujah. Surprise for the lion. Praise God. When the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, amen, hallelujah, something amazing happened. He ran towards the lion. It's not because he had practice of how to kill lions. No. Amen. That was the first extraordinary event that happened. The spirit of the Lord came upon Samson and he was transformed into an extraordinary strong person. Hallelujah. Praise God. He ran towards the lion. Now today, what is your problem? I don't know. What is the Goliath you are facing? I don't know. What is the Jericho you are facing? I don't know. But when the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you will not take a step back. You will go towards your problem. Hallelujah. Amen. You will rush towards your problem because your problem is going to become your biggest testimony. Hallelujah. You ran towards it. And you know, his parents were walking in front and they couldn't even know what happened behind. This guy went and easily tore that lion up. They didn't even realize it and hear a sound. And the Bible says he did not reveal it to his parents. There are two, three reasons of that why he did not reveal this, this thing to his parents. One, they will not believe. Sometimes you give testimony in church, nobody believes. 
I prayed and cancer went. Ah, Nila Mukariam, we know you. Something happens extraordinary, and you are so happy to share it with the church and the people, not here. I'm talking some other church, okay? You people are very encouraged. Praise God. You share it with your parents. We know you since childhood. You talk big, big things. Okay? So they will not listen. You come and tell in the church, the church brothers. Okay, fine. Let's change the topic and talk something else. So they will also not. Samson didn't share it with his parents. But one good reason I want to give you why he didn't share. Because he knew it was not by his strength. It was by the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was by the spirit of God. When the spirit of God is upon you, you will excel in all your work. When the spirit of God is upon you, your cooking will be the most delicious one. When the spirit of God is upon you, your family life will be exemplary. When, you, when the Spirit of God is upon you, there will be no one stopping you. God will take you forward to your destiny. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Praise God. Next time you see your challenge, Amen, stir up the Spirit of God that is inside of you. How can this be? This can be by the power of the Holy Spirit inside of me. Amen. How can I come? How can I be here today? Even COVID times, how can I fly all the way from there by the power of the Holy Spirit? Yesterday I told you my wife got COVID-19 positive one evening. Next day morning she was completely healed because the name of Jesus is about COVID-19. Hallelujah. Whom are you afraid of? Praise God. Let's all be afraid of only God. Amen. Nothing else. No one else. Praise God. Amen. Sickness will come. Sickness will go. When I was age of three, three or four, meningitis had come inside of me, you know. And my mommy that time, she couldn't do anything, medicine and all that was not that much. Amen. But she said to the Lord, if you will heal my son, my son will serve you. Amen. She had a vow, praise God, with God. Amen. And I praise God because of the prayers of my parents. Hallelujah. All three of us are in the service of the Almighty God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today, let me tell you, amen, all parents listening to me, amen, pray for the new generation. Amen. amen cry for the new generation. Hallelujah. Our generation is getting lost. Hallelujah. They are, they're getting lost with the media. They're getting lost with other career plans. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, pray that they will carry the fire of God, the word of God, wherever they go. Hallelujah. They will not compromise the word of God. The word of God should be the highest priority. Pray, cry and pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. This child that is born in you, amen, will be the savior. The child that you are giving birth, hallelujah, will change the course of history. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that? The child that God has given me, hallelujah, will bring change by the power of the Holy Spirit. Will bring a great change, hallelujah. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, praise God. We want them to be doctors, it is good. We want them to be engineers, not bad at all. But above that, they should be children of the Most High God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, they play well, sports well, nothing, no, nothing wrong at all in that. Hallelujah. But above all, the Spirit of God must come upon our children because they are the future. Amen. They are the one who will carry the word of God. Praise God. And that is what has happened with this nation of USA. Praise God. Amen. The new generation, the devil has been so crafty and he's worked very hard on it. Amen. I know, I know couples who don't want children. Because they want to enjoy their life. Praise God. But children are the gift from God. Praise God. Pray and ask for a child who will be anointed in your womb. Hallelujah. Praise God. Who will serve God. Prepare the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray. Praise God. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't push your children into all the... That's good. Amen. But push them into reading the word of God. Into praying. Into begging and answering. And Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. That is what this generation needs. Otherwise they will be lost. Amen. Their dollars will not make you happy. Hallelujah. Praise God. But their life and their ministry will make you happy. Hallelujah. Your retirement life will be seeing and watching them preaching and praying and delivering many people. Hallelujah. Do you see that in faith? Do you see that in faith? Will that be your prayer? Hallelujah. My retirement life, 
I will see my children praising God, worshiping God, hallelujah, preaching the word of God. How can this be when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? When the Holy Spirit